Hello and welcome to another video with me, Ben Pearson. Have you ever wondered where all the TV, film and everyone gets all their police kit from? Well, I'm here in Wakefield. Can I say Wakefield? You can say Wakefield. I can say you Wakefield. You can say Leeds, you can say, <laughs> say America if you like. It's just a word, isn't it? Yeah. You can say the word. You can I'm say here word. in a place called Wakefield in West Yorkshire, uh, a company called Police Lot, and this is the owner who's Dave. Dave, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Ben. And Dave is going to take us behind the scenes of what goes on at Police Lot and how all the supporting actors work, where they get all the kit from. First of all, Dave, have you got any guns? Speak to our armour and John about that. We're going to see some guns. So if you come on, have a bit of a walk through. Dave, can you tell us what's obviously going on here and what's obviously taking place with the officers, the kit and everything else? So this particular set here was built specifically for training of our supporting artists, also known as extras yep. within film and TV. Um, police lot realised that there was a need for people that had maybe not been in the police before to have some form of training to portray police officers as authentically as possible on set. I'm sure you'll have seen many programmes in the past before and gone, oh, the police don't do it like that and they don't use the equipment like this and, and, and it's quite annoying sometimes. And that's the reason why we put the courses together and we train our, our guys so that they are confident on set in portraying police officers. Fantastic. So when we're on a TV production or a film set and we're going to be giving firearms, we need someone that's an authorised armourer to be giving them and that's where John comes in. Nice to meet you, John. I'm Ben. Nice to meet you, man. Now, now tell me about what you've got here, firearms-wise, gun-wise, and why it's got to be done properly by someone like yourself. Yeah, we've got a six-hour MCX. A what? Yeah, <laughs> and a Glock, a Glock 17. Right, and tell me why someone like me, who's never touched a firearm before in my life, needs someone like you to show me what to do. Our job is to keep everyone safe on set, prove it's a safe gun, no one gets hurt. Right. And I'll take it you're, you said you're authorised by the Home Office? Well, home Office approved armourers, yes. So in theory then, let's just say these are fake guns. If I want a, a live gun or something that's actually going to go bang, bang, bang on set, yes. you can provide that we as well. We can provide all that. Right. Yes. So if you take me through the Glock and can you show me how to make it, what you class as being safe okay. uh, and what you do if you're going to hand it to me as a, a live gun or a hot gun or a safe gun or however you want to word it. Yes. Okay, so I'll drop the magazine. And we'll show you inside the breech there. there's nothing yep. in there magazine there's nothing in there and that's a safe gun now so you can handle that on set and what's my protocol if there was something in there am i meant to say i'm not accepting it you, until wouldn't, you, accept say... it. you wouldn't accept it you'd point something out right you'd say i'm not happy with that or what's that right you know, and you, you can know, i ask you... where these are all kept are these kept in a safe armory somewhere these are all locked up in an armory yes uh, I'd armory. Say, i know being a police officer but walking down the street with one of these it's an offence, or yes. you most likely get shot. You would. The police would obviously load up, you'd have one to one to follow you, and Correct. you're probably going to get a cap yes. in your ass. Looks like a gun, is a gun. <laughs> That's it. The, the automatic yeah, weapon. The rifle, yeah. The Tommy so, gun, so to speak. Yeah. So this is the same again, safe, it's airsoft, so that's, so that's a safe gun. So then I handle the weapon. Correct. Um, and then obviously use it on set and then give it back. So it comes from the artist straight back to myself. Right. And then every time it's shown safe, when it goes back on set again. This is the biggest ones you've got. <laughs> we, have, we have bigger. <laughs> we have bigger. And tell me about the taser as well then. Taser is a laser pointer. So it is, it's a decommissioned laser um, a taser. What's a, it was a real one, but it's been decommissioned. It's just a, a laser and a torch now. Right. So obviously you can see at the back. Can yeah. you get in there, Mike? Can you see that? So it's got all the... So it, ideal for TV and film. So it does exactly what it says on the tin. Yeah. The only thing it doesn't do is doesn't light discharge. you up. Right. It doesn't discharge any prongs. Right, fantastic. Okay. Do you want to ask me anything else about my expertise with firearms? <laughs> <laughs> so one thing police lot are really, really professional at is making police officers look as authentic as possible. They've got all the correct kit, and what they do, they put all the kit on these dummies as well. So what you can do is you can come across and make sure all these dummies are what you need. You can actually lift them off the shelf, all right? <laughs> you can look can I, this is real as well look and I touch it <laughs> but you can see how professional all the kits are you can see morning officer 
you can see what they look like you can see this one's not moving I think this one's a real dummy you can see how good they make it look so everyone's going to be authentic and at the end of it you've always got this moody sergeant that doesn't ever want to smile he's got two weeks to his pension and he doesn't give a toss anymore and last but not least you've got burglar bill burglar bill's ready he's there with all his kit on he looks like he's going to mug someone and he's got a he's got a real piece of wood in his hand but this is what police lot are famous for um, and yeah, that's all I can say about your dummies. These pretend firearm shields are so, these So these, these are what the police use, but these are the training shields, so they're a little bit lighter. Right. These are the genuine ballistic So uh, they're full ballistic well. up to, I can't, I can't remember what it was, but it's over nine millimeter, isn't it, for it a ballistic is. shield. Yeah. So police lot have got all the ballistic shields, they've got NATO helmets, which are our version of right helmets, round shields, right long shields as well, so you can interlink them, clip them together. You've got everything you need for a PSU, which is our riot serials. So you've got everything from vests, goggles, overalls, firearms covers, tack legs. You've got um, shin pads. You've got all body armor as well. So you so like this as well, look. So there your leg pads. This is what they use as well in a riot. So you put them on top of your legs there, in, just in case you get some thrown at you. So there's nothing you don't really have, is there? We've got everything. You've got everything. Look down here, method of entry equipment. So you've got the big red key. That's called the hooli bar at the back there. One thing we get asked all the time is about counter-tourism and about specialist firearms groups as well. So Dave, just tell us what this is as well. Um, so this is one of the plate carriers that our CTSFOs wear. Um, this is made by a company called C2R. This is a genuine one. Uh, wherever possible, we will use the 100% genuine, exactly what the police themselves are using. Um, so they have a ballistic plate inside there. Um, but it means that they're quite small and only cover the vital organs, which yeah. means they can move rapidly um, given the, the role that they have to do. What people don't realise as well is how much a ballistic plate normally weighs as well. Mm, they sure. are very heavy and that's why these specialist CTSFOs are very, very fit. They, they work alongside SAS uh, and they're very fit what they do. But if you just come further down here, have a look at some of the kit. All the specialist kit that they use, all the jackets, all the vests, and these look, look at these. These are the proper real deal. These are what they wear on the head. They've got the cameras on the back, which lead to the front, specialist earphones as well. It's um, it's just a good piece of kit, is that, isn't it? Yeah, so the, these, are the, these are the fast helmets. Um, these come with um, ear protection, digital ear protection. So this means that they can, um, you can hear people speaking, but when there's a loud noise like gunfire, uh, they'll automatically protect the hearing. Again, your stab vest, bulletproof vest, how it's kitted out. So you've got your taser, you've got your gas, you've got, this is basically what we used to wear. You've got your uh, handcuffs and your baton as well. Um, again, you can have different ones for different ballistic protection in. I think ours were stab proof and up to nine millimetre. So everyone's gonna be slightly different. And if you turn round, Mike, as well, spin round. One thing that people don't realise is when they're being filmed, how important it is to have the correct badging on as well. Ooh. 1965 PTSD awareness, that's us. So radios and body-worn cameras over here, what you tend to find is, is everything we have is fully practical, um, so we make sure that it works on set because that's what directors want. Um, these are the body-worn cameras, so each one of these record in high definition, uh, 4K or 1080. Um, again, we've got radios. We also have period radios, so things vary. So I think we had a discussion earlier on today that... Uh, oh, oh, hello. Right, OK. Um, so I think we had a uh, co com conversation earlier on today when you joined the police force back in... Was it 20...? No, 2009. 20, 2001. 2001. So you, you had the MTS 2000 flash part radio, yep. which, was, which was this big, heavy thing. Now, it, now we're, on, we're on these really tiny digital things that weigh next to nothing. So that, when I had that radio, that used to be levered in there, over my shoulder and come down here. But this is the kind of thing we don't use anymore. Last but not least, we're going to be looking at the uniforms. You've got everything you need from all the high visits that they're going to be doing, badges. So what you don't know is when you're on a PSU right serial, everyone has different coloured epaulets. So we can see what people have got um, and who they are, rank structure, by just colours. So we're not shouting across a right situation and shouting boss, Sarge, this sort of thing. We can just see who's in charge, who's got PSU first aider, who's the superintendent, who's the sergeant. Again, boots, all the boots are actually what people wear. We've got Magnums, we have Altbergs, um, we have different sorts of boots that different people wear for different roles. But my favourite bit, Mike, follow me, it's the traffic department. This, if we could get some lights on, 
this is like my home from home. Anything we need traffic wise is gonna be down here. So we've got all those RPU signs, road close signs, collision signs. We've got all those um, flashlights. You can have things like that. Motorcycle helmets, again, what we use when we're escorting the prime minister or royal family. This is what we're using, blue fashion lights. And again, everything, like I said, are time proof because when I first joined, we did have them in the car. About 2006, we went to them. And then now, obviously, it's LED lights. Every speed is joy. Pro lasers, speed devices, and everything you need all through the years. And then we've got a stinger. This stinger is what the Stig Ben Collins drove over in our pursuit video. If you look at Ben Collins' channel, this is the actual stinger. Um, when it was given to us, it was brand new. When it was returned, it was slightly used. I do apologize. <laughs> ben Collins, if you're watching, it's all your fault and you need to pay a police lot. Uh, stingers, obviously these are your spikes. That is so you don't fall over because we've had Bobby's fall over. But that is like hypodermic needle sharp. You push down on that now just gently and it will go through your skin. And one of the most important parts we've got now, we've got police badges, um, search devices, we've got leg restraints, obviously when people are kicking off, and we've got battens. So again, when I first joined, we had these, the PR24 battens, uh, extendable, very good piece of kit. I'm not saying you tomahawk someone, but that's how you do it. If you had, you've got life or death situation. Um, then we moved on to ASPs and these sort of things. Obviously these are the prop ones, so you don't actually See them extend, um, wooden battens for its foam. And one of the things that people don't see is when you have to do a live action, if you want me to squirt it, I'll go that way. It's not actually real gas, it's water, but you can see how far it squirts. You've got a good, what, three meters radius when it sets off. Um, but yeah, that's your gas and that's how it'd be for using on live action on TV. Again, these are a firearm. You cannot have them, you cannot possess them, and you cannot spray people with them. Last but not least, your handcuffs. And I'm not saying, does anyone ever steal out from you, Dave? I, I don't know, but we might be checking your pockets <laughs> before you leave. I'm not saying I'll have anything, but I might do. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's Police Slot. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for the supporting artist. You're absolutely fantastic. Uh, if you need anything from Police Slot... What? I haven't got out. What, what are you on about? I don't... I'll, what, uh, Time to lock you up. Uh, why? I haven't done all wrong. They're, they're free. Uh, they're, can't I take them, Dave? What? You thought it was.